Meantime, senators yesterday approved funding for the CHIPS Act, including $53 billion to build semiconductors in the United States and $24 billion in incentives. Is it a smart investment in America's future or a wasteful handout? For that, we go to John Ford to weigh in. John, what do you think? Hey, Andrew. I mean, dress it up all you want, but it's a handout and a waste. Uh, how long are we going to keep falling for the corporate welfare pitch? Uh, the, the argument goes that digital is the future of everything, and the digital economy will run on chips, and the U.S. share of chip manufacturing has fallen from 37 percent 30 years ago to 12 percent today. And with China asserting itself on Hong Kong and potentially Taiwan, the U.S. and its allies can't afford to blindly rely on supply from Asia. Fine. But it's not that simple. The economic slowdown we're experiencing right now is already changing the math on how much chip manufacturing capacity the world needs and sales of PCs and smartphones are cooling. And chip makers, including Taiwan Semiconductor, Samsung and Intel, have already committed to making more chips here in the U.S. So Chips Act funding will just artificially goose the amount of spending capa and capacity here. So let's not fall victim to fear of missing out. Intel warned that unless this funding came through, it would make more chips in Germany instead of Ohio because the EU is offering more incentives. Well, maybe that's okay. Germany's pretty friendly to U.S. interests, so if they want to hand over billions in incentives, let them. I know, I know. Spending is fun. Remember when they told us the real danger during COVID was not enough stimulus? There's unintended consequences sometimes, Andrew. Okay, but uh, it wasn't that long ago that both parties agreed that supporting American manufacturing would be a good thing. Why not chips? Well, Andrew, on the other hand, this CHIPS Act funding should be twice as big. This isn't corporate welfare. This is securing the next American century when it comes to the military, the economy, and education. Think about it this way. Because of what's happening in Ukraine right now, we understand the benefits of American energy independence. We see how our European allies are overly reliant on Russia, a supplier that doesn't share our values for oil and gas. Well, over the next several decades, semiconductors will play a similar role. Countries with access to advanced chip manufacturing are going to have advantages in artificial intelligence and cyber warfare that could be just as vital as energy pipelines. And then there's the economic rationale. The Semiconductor Industry Association estimates that $50 billion in federal investment will add more than $140 billion a year, uh, sorry, uh, will add uh, $140 billion to the economy over six years. <clears throat> so why believe a chip lobbying group? Well, look at uh, South Korea's investment in Samsung and Taiwan's investment in TSMC. And oh, look at that region called Silicon Valley. A big part of the reason Silicon Valley exists is Defense Department spending that fueled aerospace companies before World War II and funded the Internet after. Economic engines like that don't spring full-grown from the head of a free market. They grow from smart, targeted choices like this CHIPS Act funding. Andrew. Isn't there a real risk, though, of an oversupply of chips? I mean, we keep hearing about uh, that possibility already, and we've seen boom-bust cycles before. That is true, Andrew, uh, but not necessarily oversupply in advanced nodes in the highest end manufacturing. There is a risk, though, that this CHIPS Act won't get through the House now with Manchin's surprise, right, on this bigger package. Why, we'll why see. do you say that? Well, because the Republicans uh, kind of supported it in the Senate, thinking that this wasn't going to happen, that Manchin, it was like a flea flicker move politically, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they thought he was going right, and he went left. Uh, so we'll see if uh, the Democrats can muster all the votes they need in the House to get this through now that Republicans right. in the House are saying, oh, well, maybe we're not going to support this Can now. you help? Hey, John, can you help with this? Yeah. Um, I'll try. There seems to be a lot. I don't know if it's pork. I don't know what it is. But there's a lot of other stuff in this chips bill that I'm not sure is really chips. And it's very hard to get the full math on what we're talking about. Do you know what's in there? I, I do not know all of what's in there. We, our great team in Washington would be better on that. I know there's less of that in there than there was before, which is why it was able to get this far. But this uh, latest bit of kind of pre-August 8th movement uh, in Washington, suddenly putting this in danger. Yesterday, it looked like it was going to happen. But today, we'll right. see.